This is Carrie Hook Ministries. <laughs> well, welcome like? back. I was just kind of getting tickled. I usually it's uh, hi. Is that uh, something new you want to that say? That was something new. Okay. Right? Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm Crystal and this is Mark. And we are in the book of John. Where it's Car- we are Carrie Hope Ministries, and we hope that you are going to be, those of you who are joining us regularly, you got me all messed up. I'm I, sorry, I can't get I'm it. Sorry. Welcome back. <laughs> the, uh, we just want you to know that if you're watching tonight, make sure you send us a message, say hi to us, so we can say hello back to you at the end of the live stream. It always means a lot to us to know that you're out there and you're watching and learning and paying attention. We look like we're ready for Easter. We are. Uh, I guess we are. A lot of people are ready for warm weather. Warm weather. Are we? Yeah, I am. (laughs) Uh, Anyway, uh, we're going to be looking, as Crystal said, in the book of John, the Gospel of John, and we are in John 3. We're going to finish that chapter tonight, Lord willing. Last week, we talked a little bit about him making, making. He was meeting with Nicodemus. That was hard to say. Maybe we should just start this entire live stream over. And one thing we didn't, one thing we didn't, uh, bring up, which I think we should, we should say something about is we talked about him meeting him at night. Nicodemus comes at night. And one of the topics that Jesus talked to him about was being in the light and how men wanted to be in the darkness and they didn't want to be in the light. And I think that's a direct reflection of him speaking to Nicodemus saying, Hey, look, I know you're coming at night. And everything's going to be known one day that we met. It's going to be known by the council. It's going to be known by everyone that you and I had this discussion at night. Now, this, these events are going to take place right after that meeting with Nicodemus. We're going to pick up after that. John's going to bring us a little transition. And we're going to talk a little bit about John the Baptist, a little bit more about Jesus and his disciples and some disputes. But let's get started, shall we? Get your Bible. We are Cary Hope Ministries, and we are a product... Of Gold Hill Wesleyan Church, we're located on Liberty Road, just off of Highway 52 in Gold Hill. If you don't have a church home, we would love you to join us. Our morning worship time is at 10 o'clock. We usually start live streaming about 10.15 if you can't be with us in person. And then every Sunday night, we have prayer time at 6 o'clock, about a 10-minute Bible study. And Crystal and I come back on our Facebook and YouTube channel. Uh, Thursday night, we're live at 7 o'clock on Facebook, and then we upload our YouTube channel about uh, 8 o'clock or so. You can see just about all of our live-streamed videos on our YouTube channel, Real Gold Hill, getting close to about 300. Tonight, we're going to talk about playing your part. And again, we're talking about the, the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verse 22 through 36. And I think it's a very important lesson because it talks a little bit about how John the Baptist knew what his role was in God's kingdom. Also, tonight's study, as I teased, is a must. It is a must. Last week's was a must. I'll get to that here in just a second. Let's start, though, in verse 22. After this, meaning that meeting with Nicodemus, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside, which is interesting. John talking about him going into the Judean countryside, because a lot of times the, the Gospels will talk about him being in Galilee, in the northern part of Israel, but this will be more in the southern part. It's where he spent some time with them and baptized. We'll talk about that here in just a second as well. Now, John also was baptizing, talking about John the Baptist, at Anon, which actually means springs, if you were curious about that. So that's why there was probably a lot of water there, near Salim, because there was plenty of water. And people were coming and being baptized. This was before John, of course, was put in prison by King Herod. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew, it doesn't say who it is, over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, look, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him. To this John replied, a person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine, and it is now complete. He must become greater, I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth, and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives a spirit without limit. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in His hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. Okay, I'm going to invite Crystal back in here. We've got a lot to talk about as we rehash verse uh, 22 through 36. 
Let's go back here, first of all, to the beginning. And we'll just talk for a second about Jesus being in the Judean countryside and John also baptizing there. Now, we were just looking really a few minutes ago about the fact that uh, there was a dispute between a Jew, it doesn't say which one, and John the Baptist's disciples, which to me is kind of interesting that John the Baptist would still have disciples once Jesus is there, but he did. And I, and I kind of think of it like a church, all right? In other words, they had a pastor in John right. the Baptist. Then they had Jesus as sort of this evangelist, if you want to mm-hmm. think of it that way. So you think about John has a, his own church, his own disciples, but they're studying. They're not studying John. They're obviously studying the Old Testament and how Jesus is fulfilling them. Now, this Jew gets upset. Again, they don't call him by name, but it has to do with ceremonial washing, which would make sense because there's baptizing going on. Yeah. And Jesus, you remember his story about the Pharisees, how they would wash outside to make sure the presentation was good, but what was inside was still dirty. Right. So it could have something to do with that. We, we know that there's a, a the preaching of repentance. And this is something that traditionally the Pharisees did not appreciate because they thought being a child of Abraham was enough. They thought that Israel had been reestablished and they didn't need to do anything in addition. John's coming along preaching repentance for their sins. Jesus is coming along preaching repentance because, because the kingdom of God is near. So that could have been some of the dispute. We definitely think it has to do with cleanliness and uh, the, the ceremonial washing. When you think about ceremonial washing, uh, Jesus took the, the large pitchers that were used for ceremonial washing. So there was some Jewish ceremony, but this seems to be a deeper heart cleansing that we're talking about. You know, baptism is one of those. We were just talking about baptism today and how it's kind of hard to define. There is a cleansing that's taking place within us but really it doesn't deal with the water. We go into the water, supposedly showing our old selves transformed outside of the water. We talked about how even in the New Testament, they speak of Noah's ark as being a form of baptism. They went into the ark. The world was all one way. They come out of the ark. It's a different way. It's also water involved in that change. Well, so, go ahead. I'm sorry. cleanse the earth that way. Exactly. That's, how, that's what God used to cleanse the earth, and, is the water. And we are cleansed by his blood. Right. And, but it's symbolic by coming out. Absolutely. Now, the disciples talk to him about Jesus being the one that's baptizing in this same location. Hard to imagine this, but in the next chapter of John, it's going to talk about Jesus is, his disciples are baptizing, but he himself isn't baptizing anyone. There are people who have disputed that John must be mistaken in chapter three. How they would know, no one knows. But it does seem as though Jesus is baptizing. I think of John writing this being an eyewitness. And so, you know, you could dispute that because in the next chapter, it does say that Jesus doesn't baptize, but his disciples. Some scholars, though, have said that perhaps he is teaching the disciples by example. Right. What's your thought? Um, I just think that we weren't there. So So we just have to accept it by what John was supposedly there. Exactly. The beauty of this, though, is John's response. John responds. How would you describe his response? Well, and, and here's something I keep I have to keep coming back to. When we say John's response, we're in the book of John, but it's the John the Baptist. We're talking about John the Baptist. It's the disciple John who wrote it. You're right. We're talking about John the Baptist. Yes. yes. John is talking about John the Baptist. That's yes. right. <laughs> yeah. Now, now, how would you describe his response when he hears the news that this guy that he was talking about is baptizing? And, and the quote is, and everyone's going to him. It's not everyone, literally, but a lot of people now are going to Jesus to be baptized and his disciples. And these disciples, they almost, you know, what do you make of that? Well, I personally, what I make of it is I think about um, whenever they, later in the New Testament, when they tell, um, I believe, I want to say it's Peter, but I'm not sure that these people were uh, baptizing or they were preaching in the name of Jesus and they rebuked them. And they, he says, you don't rebuke them. Anyone who, and it may even be Jesus who's telling yeah, Jesus them. Jesus is saying that. It, yeah. it, anyone who is 
Who isn't against? Yeah, who they're for me. Yeah. Yeah. me. You don't have to warn them it's not to do me. that. Yeah, exactly. And I kind of see it this way here. John the Baptist is saying, anyone, you know, can a person can only receive what is given them from heaven. Yeah. And he he recognizes that Jesus has come from heaven, and he talks about that. Um, I think it's interesting too how John relates Jesus to being the bridegroom and the people going to him are the bride and how he sees himself as just the one who attends the bridegroom. Yeah. And because later Jesus refers to himself as the bridegroom and the church as being the bride. There's even Old Testament passages that touch upon the bride of the Messiah and the bride of God and uh, the church being that. Yeah. So we are the bride of Christ, and so you're exactly right. One thing I want to touch on also is John recognizing who he is in Christ, who he is in God. The fact is that he doesn't have to have everyone. He's not envious that people are going over to Jesus. He's not. Uh, he has no ego. He, ha- he is very humble in that a lot of times you would have people who say, hey, look, this guy's getting all your people. John doesn't doesn't say anything about, oh, well, you know, well, just let them go. Or there's, you know, he is happy for that because he knows that really his whole mission on earth was to point people to Jesus. So he's not jealous. He's able to back out of it. And as you said, the bridegroom is, of course, the one that's going to take the bride. We're the bride. But the friend He's he is actually the one that brings the bride to the bridegroom, and so when he talks about um, he he says I'm the friend who attends the bridegroom. I wait and listen. A lot of times they waited for the bridegroom, and the friend would bring the bride to the bridegroom, and then step back so that they could culminate the marriage. So what we're saying is in John's case, he's saying, look, I've got the bridegroom. We're the bride. Now let me step back. That's my job. I don't want to bring attention upon myself. So the humility of John is just overwhelming here. We have to accept what God gives us. There are people who are going to pastor churches. There are going to be thousands of people. There are going to be missionaries who reach thousands for Christ. There are going to be musicians who write hymns that are going to be remembered through generations. But then there's also going to be the country parson who's going to go from one church to another and see people every third Sunday and maybe 30 people will come. You know, Maybe in his life, only 10 people will come to know the Lord. But those 10 people, every one of them is important to the Lord and to the parson. We have to accept our role. Some Somebody may write a great song. Uh, I think of Jack Hafer, who, who wrote Majesty, but he didn't write anything else that I know of. He may have, but he's already dead and gone. There's only one song that I know of but very big song, but then you've got somebody who writes a nut. Think of Charles Wesley and all the songs that they wrote, you know, and, yeah. and just numerous ones. There's, but, uh, you know, the Gaithers and, and so forth, these people who make a lot of different music that is, is big time chart toppers in, in gospel music. Some people only write one, but it's a life changing experience. We need to recognize our place in God's kingdom and back up. Now I want you to notice something too. Uh, he must become greater, and I must become less. I said this was a study about musts. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and last week, if you were with us, Jesus told uh, Nicodemus, you must be born again. And he said, just as Moses held up the serpent in the desert, the Son of Man must be lifted up. Tonight, we have two other musts. John the Baptist saying, I must decrease and he must increase or back, you know, yeah. uh, re- regroup that. Uh, so anyhow, but I must become less. He talks again about the one who's from above is above all. The one who's from the earth belongs to the earth. Again, establishing who he is versus who the Messiah is. There's one last thing I want to talk about is he's kind of prophetic about saying no one's going to accept his testimony. Whoever has accepted it is certified that God is truthful for the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God for God gives the spirit without limit. Jesus gives the spirit to those who ask for it and the spirit is more than enough to cleanse us, to uh, heal us spiritually and to be able to develop in us a Christ likeness. Yeah. Also, he says the father loves the son has placed everything in his hands. Whoever believes 
in the Son has eternal life. We know that. Jesus said it himself, John 3, 16. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. And I want to look at that word remains for just a second. Remains. It's not like God's wrath is poured out, like you would think of with Noah, or like you would think of with the children of Israel. You know, I mean, it wasn't poured out on Noah, but on the earth it was. The children of Israel, whenever God would pour out his wrath, sometimes people would just die in his presence. Mm-hmm. But in this situation, God's wrath remains for those who reject the Son. In other words, you've never gotten to an intimate location where God could find, or where you could find salvation through Christ into God's kingdom. His wrath, his judgment remains on you. So I think that's some very deep talking. Uh, so we've talked about our place in the ministry. John shows it. We've talked about jealousy and how John didn't have it again. The humility of John. Very easy for people to get jealous of others who are recognized in the kingdom as being bigger, having a bigger church, a bigger following. We talked about God's wrath remaining. And we've talked about the four musts. So that's what I wanted us to talk about. Next week, we're in John chapter 4. We're going to talk about the Samaritan woman at the well. Outstanding, outstanding story that Jesus has for us in that respect. We're continuing our series this Sunday, number five of the 10 most important Bible stories. We hope you'll join us for that. Uh, it's coming up at 10 o'clock is when morning worship is. We usually live stream about 10, 15 if you can't be with us in person. But I want to invite you to do that. Hey, we need to say hello to some folks. Who's watching tonight? We do. Okay, let's see. And if you yeah. haven't said hey yet, say hey now. <laughs> Hello to Denise and Fred. Hey, Denise and Fred. Good to have you guys with us tonight. Hello to Ralph and Teresa. Hey, Ralph and Teresa. Good to hear from y'all. Hello to Jan. Hey, Jan. Good to hear from you. Hello to Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. Thanks for joining us. Hello to Don and Brenda. Hey, Don and Brenda. How are (laughs) y'all? Hello to... Let's see. All right. Let me see. (laughs) Did you lose your place? Yes. No, I didn't. I didn't. All right. Okay, hello. Everybody's hanging on your every word. All right, did I say Helen? No, we need to say <laughs> hello Helen. Hello to Helen. Hello, Helen. Good to have you with us. Hello to Charles and Betty. Hey, Charles and Betty. Hello to Tony. Hey, Tony. Glad to have you with us also tonight. Hello to Bonnie and Jamie. Hey, Bonnie and Jamie. Good to hear from you. Uh, hello to Ann. Hi, Ann. Boy, what a great crowd we've got tonight. Hello to Donnie. Hey, Donnie. Thanks for joining us. And hello to Candy. Hey, Candy. Boy, what a great crowd. So glad to have you guys with us tonight. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we're going to close with a prayer and ask God to have his way with us, trying to help us to be the people that God wants us to be, to not envy others, but to certainly play the part that He's that heaven's laid out for us. Right. Okay. So let's, let's have a prayer together, shall we? Father, we thank you so much for those who've joined us tonight. And help us, Lord, to recognize our place in the kingdom. Help us to be like John in the way that we practice humility and understand that our role may not be the role somebody else has. Somebody else may get more recognition, have a bigger church, have a have a greater following, whatever the case may be. Be more successful as a Sunday school teacher or a, or a, a member of the board. It could be anything, Father. They may just have a natural gift. But Father, you have a place for us to play. Help us to find it, help us to realize it, and help us to be faithful in it. Forgive us where we fail to. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. I want to thank you again for joining us tonight. Anybody else to say hello to tonight? I hope that you have a great rest of your week. Hope to see you in church on Sunday. God bless everyone. Good night.